This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. What's up guys, Leon here, welcome to a new video. Can you still remember the Tesla gun? The last update was a long time ago. However, that doesn't mean I haven't continued to plan and work on it. About two months ago I created a second version of the PCB. But it didn't work as I wanted it to, so I didn't show it to you. Today we will work on a third version of the PCB. Let's hope that this time everything works. This was the first Tesla gun PCB and this one the second. I designed a new circuit for the new PCB. The function is same as always. We get a sine wave feedback signal via a current transformer. The amplitude of the signal is kept to a maximum voltage of 5 volt by a diode clamp. The following hex inverter converts a sine wave signal into a square wave signal. This path is then over a RC delay circuit into the MOSFET driver ICs. With the RC delay circuit I hope to be able to shift the phase of the signal a little bit. As driver I use this time two UCC37425. This IC is a dual gate driver with one inverting output. This simply means that the signal at one of the two outputs is 180 degrees phase shifted. As you can see we are using two drivers. One driver for each side of the following full bridge. So we will also use two GDTs or gate drive transformers. The GDTs are then connected to the full bridge which is made of GAN or gallium nitrate MOSFETs. We will use the so called TP90H050. These can switch 34 amps at 900 volts and have a drain source resistance of only 63 milliohm. Another advantage of these is that the gate charge is very low, only 17.5 nanocoulomb. Thus we need only a very low power for driving. Accordingly the GDTs can also be very small. The power supply for the bridge is provided by a simple ZVS circuit. We will not regulate it because regulation prevents switching at zero crossing. And this results in enormous heat losses at large loads. And we can't afford additional heat in a 3D printed housing. That's it with the circuit. Actually not complicated. Here are the component values. I would recommend you to not build the circuit yet. First everything has to work. This is a layout for the circuit. As you can see I use a lot of SMD components. This is the first time I work on a PCB with such components. Well guys, you know what's coming now, don't you? <laughs> exactly, the PCBs were sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a PCB manufacturer which allows you to make your own PCBs. For only $2 you already get 5 PCBs. If that is not a good price, you can even go one step further. If you use the PCB assembly service, you don't even have to assemble the boards. Believe me, especially with SMD components you save a lot of trouble. The only thing you have to do is save your Gerber file as a zip file. Once this is done, select the desired parameters. Lead free? <laughs> yeah, definitely. What color are you in favor of? <laughs> Purple is sexy, isn't it? Just upload the file, order and you're done. Within 24 hours your PCB will be produced. And a few days later they will arrive. If you register at JLC PCB via the link in the video description, you will get 4 coupons with a total value of $27. So guys, take a look at this PCB. The color, just beautiful. Let's go. Since there are a lot of SMD components on the PCB instead of holes, there are a lot of these solder pads here. SMD means something like surface mount device. Normally we always use THT parts, which means through hole technology. I think the names are self-explanatory. Soldering will also be different this time. The classic soldering iron stays away for now. We need hot air. Because instead of the normal solder, we will use a soldering paste to solder the SMD components. We will apply this with a stencil. This is a so-called SMD stencil. The holes in the stencil are exactly at the place where the solder paste has to be placed. First we position the PCB on the stencil in a way so that the holes are perfectly located on the soldering areas. Then we fix the PCB with some tape. 
As you can see, now only the soldering areas of the SMD components are visible. We now apply the solder paste to the stencil. Uh, it looks a bit like hair gel. Now we need a spatula. With this we spread the solder paste over the holes until all soldering areas are covered. Now carefully remove the tape. As you can see, this is the first time I do this. Although the solder paste is not only on the intended surfaces. But that's not a problem, because the paste flows back by itself when it melts. Now we have to place the SMD components. Maybe it was not such a good idea to go to the climbing gym before. You really need patience and steady hands. It took me about half an hour, but now all components are there where they should be. Let's start with the soldering. This is absolutely simple. You just have to make sure that the air does not blow too hard. I must say, I'm very satisfied. Now the rest of the components are added to the PCB. And done. In my opinion, the PCB looks really professional. With some heat conductive glue, I mounted small heat sinks on the MOSFET of the ZVS as well as on the gate driver ICs to better dissipate the generated heat. I also had to sort the heat sink for the full bridge out of a bigger heat sink. By hand, of course. That was like a workout. With this jumper, we can switch the ZVS on and off. If we connect these two jumpers, the output of the ZVS boost converter is connected to the bridge. Of course, the GDT must not be missing. This time they are really small. I want them with 8 turns of magnet wire. They are connected with JST connectors to the bridge, otherwise you can easily connect them wrong. To generate the necessary high voltage for the bridge, we need a transformer, which is controlled by the ZVS driver. We will make it out of these ferrite cores. I use my 3D printer to print some tubes onto which the cores will be wound. The primary coil consists out of 2x5 windings. As you can see, I did not use one thick wire, but many thin magnet wires to counteract the skin effect. The secondary coil has about 80 turns with a 0.5mm magnet wire. Now we just have to put everything together. The cable tie holds the cores together. What is also missing now is a current transformer. This has 80 turns and is attached to the PCB via a JST connector. Guys, this just looks really good. Bad news. Of course, I only want to show you things that works. And what can I say? <laughs> this is not the case. Do you know what that is? $120 of dead GAN MOSFETs. It took me about an hour to do this. Believe me, I tried everything for hours afterwards. Again and again I got a smoke signal from the PCB. I still haven't understood the meaning of this message. That's really frustrating. After a hardcore meditation and the search for inner peace, a cold shower, I had new energy. I still want to offer you something in this video. Therefore, I will show you first that at least something works. The ZVS driver. I had to increase the inductance by a little bit. The connections of the transformer are simply soldered to the PCB. A 330 volt lamp light up. Good. Now we will do some tests with the old Tesla gun PCB in combination with a new one. Because without flashes I won't finish this video. This is how the whole setup looks now. A bit confusing, but it works. Have a look at the gate signal. This is scope porn. So guys, here is a little final.
So guys, that wasn't bad, but I'm not really satisfied with the results. I learned a couple of things during this video production. The first thing, don't forget protection diodes. They are absolutely important and I forgot them. Unbelievable. <laughs> the second thing, GAN fats or gallium nitrate fats are absolutely expensive. Maybe I have to inform myself better next time. And the third thing is that there are things that you don't understand. And that's okay. With that being said guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, leave me a comment down below. And then we will see us in the next video.